Today I'm sewing and sharing the Nomi Ruffle Top by Tiana's Closet. You can find this free pattern on her website. I've left a link for you below so you can check out all the details, grab a copy, and sew it along with me. This blouse has ruffles all along the bottom as well as the bottom of the sleeves, and it has a keyhole buttoned opening in the back. It's a fairly easy project that comes together nicely. This blouse is intended to have somewhat of a loose fitting silhouette, and I made this blouse as per my regular measurements on the Tiana sizing chart. And although I like the fit, I would recommend sizing up one or two sizes if you want the loose fit like the model is wearing in the pattern photo. So grab your pattern, cut out your fabric, mark your notches, and let's get started. I've transferred my darts onto the wrong side of my front piece, and now I'm ready to pin them in place. Fold the dart in half, and pin through one dart leg and out the other. And do that for both darts. Now sew your darts from the outer edge to the point, leaving thread tails at the point so that you can tie them in knots. Now we're going to gather the notched edge of our hem ruffle. From one edge of the ruffle, using the longest stitch length on your machine and about a half inch seam allowance, sew all around the curve of the ruffle from one side all the way to the other. And do this for both of your hem ruffles. Make sure that you leave thread tails on both ends of your ruffle so that you have threads to pull for gathering. On the bottoms of your front and back bodice pieces, you have notches indicating where to place your ruffles. The notch in the side seam is where you will place the outer tip of your ruffle, and the notch on your bottom curve will match with the notch on the bottom curve of your ruffle piece. Place the basted edge of your ruffle right sides together with the bottom of your front piece, matching your centers and pin in place. And then match up the outer tip of your ruffle with the notch at the bottom side seam of your bodice. Then we can start pulling our gathering stitches so that the bottom of the ruffle matches the bottom of the bodice from pin to pin. Once you've pulled those gathers, find the notch at the bottom of the ruffle and match it with the notch at the bottom of your blouse and pin in place. Evenly distribute those gathers and pin them in place as well. Do the same to gather and attach the other half of your ruffle. Now take this to your machine and sew from one end of the ruffle all the way to the other with a half inch seam allowance. Then you can serge your seams to finish. Follow all of these steps to attach your other hem ruffle piece to the back bodice as well. And because the side seam curves right into that ruffle seam, I started my serging right at the underarm and continued serging all around the ruffle seam and all the way around to the other underarm. And I finished the seams this way for the front and back pieces. Now we're going to add the sleeve ruffle to the bottom of the sleeve in the same way as we attached our hem ruffle. Baste all along the top edge from side to side with your longest stitch length, leaving thread tails on both ends so that you have threads to pull for gathering. And do this for both sleeve ruffle pieces. Match the center of the gathered edge of your sleeve ruffle with the center of the bottom of your sleeve right sides together and pin in place. Then start pulling your sleeve ruffle threads to gather. And once those gathers fit the bottom of the sleeve, pin in place. And repeat those gathers for the other half. Do this to attach the ruffles to both of your sleeves and then sew the ruffles on with a half inch seam allowance and serge your seams to finish. Also at this point, I'm gonna take both sleeves to my ironing board and press the bottom of the ruffles to the wrong side by half of an inch. I'm doing this just so I'll have a memory crease here at the bottom of the sleeve so that it's easier for us to hem the sleeves later. Fold your sleeve right sides together and pin that underarm seam. Sew both seams with a half inch seam allowance and serge to finish. Place your front and back bodice pieces right sides together and pin your side seams and shoulder seams. And do this on both sides. Now we can sew our shoulder seams and side seams with a half inch seam allowance. For the side seam, you'll start sewing at the underarm and you'll sew all the way down at a half inch seam allowance just until you reach the seam that we created when we attached the ruffle to the bottom of the bodice. Backstitch to secure. Serge your shoulder seams to finish. Now that we've sewn the seam of the sleeve, we can hem the bottoms of the sleeves. 
For the sleeves as well as for the bottom of the main garment, we're going to do rolled hems. Take the raw bottom edge of the sleeve and fold it up to the crease I created earlier with my iron. I'm going to fold that fold on the crease and pin all around the bottom of the sleeve. Roll the hems around both sleeves and all around the ruffle at the bottom of your bodice. When you get to the curved edges of your bottom ruffle as they become the side seams, roll the hem all the way up to the side seam and backstitch to secure. Then I'm going to start a new rolled hem for the rest of the ruffle, backstitching at the beginning to secure and sewing around as usual. And for all of these ruffles, we're going to edge stitch all the way around close to the inner fold. And now we can attach our sleeves to the bodice. Place the notch at the top of your sleeve right sides together at your shoulder seam. And pin in place. Also match up your underarm seams and pin in place. And then continue pinning all the way around matching the notches that indicate front and back. Sew your sleeve into the armhole with a half inch seam allowance and serge your seams to finish. Repeat all of these steps to attach your other sleeve to the other armhole. The pattern includes pieces for the neckline binding and the keyhole binding, and you would cut these pieces on the bias. But for this project, I'm choosing to use half inch wide single fold bias tape. Starting first with binding the keyhole, I'm going to open up my bias tape so that the folds are out flat. I'm going to match the raw edges of my bias tape to the keyhole and pin all the way around. Then I'm going to take this to my sewing machine and sew in the crease of my bias binding with a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around. Now that the binding is attached, I'm going to turn the binding to the inside of the garment along the stitching line. And I'm going to pin in place all the way around, making sure that on the inside, the opposite folded edge of the bias tape is turned under and ready to be edge stitched. Now that I have that pinned all the way around, I'm going to edge stitch all the way around the inner folded edge of my bias tape from neckline to neckline. And now I'm going to bind the neckline in the same way. I'm going to start pinning here, allowing my bias tape to extend beyond the center back by about half an inch. And pin all the way around, allowing your bias tape to extend half an inch beyond the center back on the other side as well. Now I'm going to sew the binding all around the neckline, stitching again in the crease of the bias tape with a quarter inch seam allowance. For my button loop, I've cut a piece of thin craft cord to a length of about two and a half inches. And now I'm gonna fold this bias tape to the inside of the garment, tucking this portion that I left extending beyond the center back to the inside so that it's tucked between the main binding and the outside of the garment. And then I'm going to take my button loop and insert it into the tucked edge of my binding at the center back, inserting the ends by about half an inch so they're nicely concealed, and pin in place. Then I'm going to take it to my sewing machine and stitch about a quarter inch away from that center back, back and forth a few times to secure that button loop. Now that my button loop is secured, I can continue turning the rest of the binding to the inside, right along that binding seam, and pin in place all the way around. And at your opposite center back, go ahead and tuck your binding to the inside just as we did for the other side, and pin in place. And then go to your machine and edge stitch close to the inner fold of your bias binding, from center back all the way around to center back, just as we did for our keyhole binding. Sew the button to your center back, opposite your button loop, and then you're all done with your blouse. Thank you for watching this sew along. Make sure you check out my other videos for more great sewing inspiration, and I'll see you in the next video.